Excellent. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, the plastic pollution calculator. So this is part of the uh, the user task force from Marine Litter, um, and it's been developed by the University of Leeds, uh, Resource Futures, and and ISA on this. And uh, we believe this is kind of the most comprehensive tool to date in terms of quantifying plastic pollution sources, pathways, uh, and the eventual fate. So when we're talking about plastic pollution. There's a lot of different factors that contribute to um, to trying to understand where it's coming from, uh, and the calculator tries to combine all of these factors. So you can see here um, these are just a few of the ones that it counts for, uh, but it's everything from kind of the waste management aspects, right through to kind of the the local geography and meteorology, um, and yeah, truly trying to look at the details of all these aspects and how they are contributing towards marine litter. So just to give a kind of a brief overview um, of the methodology behind the calculator, there are several different stages that are run. So um, in the first stage, uh, we look at the waste generation. Uh, so for this is we actually use, we can use existing data or we can do um, primary data collection on the ground. Uh, but we apply an internal methodology to try to correct this data. Um, this, the reason behind this is um, when you measure data at some point in the waste management system, you often neglect a lot of the actual waste generated. Um, so to give you an example, if you were to measure um, waste at a dump site, um, but you had a very low collection efficiency, then you're actually measuring only a fraction of the waste that might actually be generated in that area. Um, and a lot of the uncollected waste might end up becoming marine litter. So we, we apply an internal methodology to correct the waste generation so that you um, start from a point which includes all the waste sources. Um, we then go and we map the waste management system. Um, so by this I mean we, we map the kind of the plastic pollution flows. We have uh, we map this on kind of a daily resolution um, and with 11 different plastic items as it flows through um, the waste management system. And we try to look at all the details of that as well. So everything from kind of what kind of bins are used, um, to what kind of transportation is used. Um, and the idea behind this is that we can link the specifics of the waste management to um, conceptual models on how much waste we think is going to leak from that um, from that um, process. So, for instance, if you have very poor um, containers, waste containers, then you're going to have a lot more leakage into the environment. So we account for that as well. Um, but we also look at the aspects outside of kind of um, the waste management system. So we look at uh, waste and what are residents doing with that uncollected waste. So is it being burnt um, or are they dumping it into kind of local drains or local rivers? Uh, and once we have kind of this waste in the environment, we then apply a methodology which um, takes into account factors such as uh, the wind, level of wind, how um, how easy an item is to be transported by, say, wind or surface runoff, uh, and the local geographical and meteorological factors. We combine them into um, using equations to try to come up with a way to estimate how much of that plastic is going to end up being transferred to waterways. So that's just a very quick snapshot of kind of the methodology um, behind the calculator. Now, because there's a lot of detail in that, um, we run the calculator at a district level, so a, a neighborhood level, very fine resolution. Um, we do that so we can we can uh, ensure we, we capture all this detail, which is important for quantifying marine litter. Uh, and in terms of kind of the um, the scale, um, we can we can do it everything from informal settlements right down to kind of high income countries, downtown city districts. So really, is a, a global method. And despite it being um, run at a fine resolution and neighborhood scale, um, we can actually build up um, different neighborhoods together into a wider region, so it's scalable to a larger area. So what kind of questions um, does the plastic pollution calculator, um, what, can it, what can it answer? So for instance, like I mentioned, we were able to give you estimates on what waste generation um, within your district uh, and the composition of that waste in terms of um, the plastic items. We have an in-depth look at the informal sector, and it's able to say the, whether the informal sector are helping or hindering kind of recycling efforts in the area. We look at the open burning of waste. Um, we think this is a very prominent issue in, in lots of parts of the world and needs more attention to it. Um, so plastic pollution is not just kind of the marine litter side, but also kind of the effects of open burning as well. We look at the waste management system and specifically kind of the quality of the infrastructure used. 
um, to be able to relate this to how much waste is escaping into the environment. We can look at what is in the environment, how it is impacting um, local infrastructure, such as is waste um, blocking up trains and um, causing flooding. And importantly, we also look at how much plastic is being transported to the waterways um, and then therefore becoming marine litter. So all of these can kind of be answered by the plastic pollution calculator um, and others as well. And so um, I'm just going to kind of give a, a quick run through of some of the results um, that you can be expecting from the plastic pollution calculator. So on the waste generation side, um, it's not just kind of overall waste generation which it can produce, but break this down by the different sectors as well. So for instance, you can see exactly what is the main contributors towards waste being generated. Um, and then also you can break this down to look at what are the item composition of that waste generated. So for each sector, as you can see on, on the bottom X axis, um, you can see how much they're generating and of what type of plastic. And it's important to go down to this plastic item level composition um, because we relate the physical properties of the items to their ability to um, either be kind of transferred. Um, so for instance, a plastic bag has a higher probability of being blown by wind off the dump site um, than another item, but also in terms of their value. So uh, a plastic bottle might have a, a, higher, a higher chance of being collected once it's in the environment compared to other items. Once it's leaked to the environment, we uh, were able to rank which, which are the processes that cause um, the majority of this leakage to occur. Um, so in this scenario here, you can see the kind of the top uh, influence is from recycle uh, stream um, waste waiting for collection. So in this in this circumstance, um, there was recycle containers provided, but they were of insufficient capacity to be able to hold all of the plastic, and they were also um, in to infrequent collection. So it's causing a lot of plastic to overflow the, uh, the side of the containers and leak out into the environment. But as you can see, the factors that we actually account for, different leakage processes, um, everything from kind of your littering to your uncollected waste to your, um, your dump sites and disposal. So by ranking these in this manner, we're able to identify where to apply interventions, where would it be most appropriate and most effective to apply different interventions. Now again, we can break this down on a plastic item level, so we can also see kind of what are the items that are leaking to the environment, uh, and this is important to know what harm might be done by the items. So certain items have more harm than others, such as your plastic bags and causing kind of entanglement issues. Um, so we can really break down all, all the data in the calculator into a lot of detail to analyze uh, exactly what is occurring in the district. And importantly, we are able to monitor um, the waste that is reaching, uh, is released into the environment over a time period. And you actually see a lot of fluctuations in this. Um, one of the, the hard points about plastic pollution is it's very um, time dependent. Uh, and you can get it occurring in just certain periods of the year. Um, so you can see in this graph here, um, this is the waste that is, is kind of leaked to the environment. You can see the small peaks, they're relating to these recycled containers, which I, I mentioned, um, where they're stopping to come overflowing and releasing their waste into the environment. Whereas the larger peak in the center, um, this was from an event. So it also, also accounts for kind of one-off events. So uh, for instance, religious festivals, where there may be more waste generated, but you don't necessarily adapt the waste management to be able to cope with that. And lastly, it kind of looks at how much uh, plastic is then transported to waterways um, and over what time scale. Um, so you can see here there's a large rise um, later on in the year. Uh, this is because of the towards the, kind of the meteorological conditions, so increased rainfall um, during the kind of rainy season is causing more plastic to be washed down through the drains um, and it the waves. So as you can see, there's a lot of detail that we were able to go into in the calculator to really understand and plastic pollution sources, pathways, and their eventual fate. We also realized that from kind of a policy point of view, we want to be able to break these results down into simple and clear um, ideas of what is going on. So for this, we can create thank you diagrams. So we can start with what is waste generated, and we can move on to look at how much of that is collected and how much of that might be mismanaged. And then again, further break that down into its eventual fate. Everything from kind of your marine litter to your 
um, the amount that is retained on land, the amount which is openly burnt, the amount which is recycled, uh, and so on. Uh, and I mentioned we were able to, uh, to run this on a district level, but build it up over larger regions. So one of the case studies, which we have a pilot calculator so far, um, is to the island of Bali in Indonesia. Um, and so we had 60 odd different districts that we ran the calculator on, and then we were able to track the waste between the districts as well, and um, built up a picture of the whole island. And by doing subsequent kind of GIS analysis, we were able to actually plot which are the rivers which are mostly likely to have plastic um, flowing down them. And so could really identify the hotspots in pollution, both in terms of kind of their source and in terms of where they're flowing through. Uh, and we're also able to, again, link this in terms of which districts were the most critical to be able to intervene in. So we're able to map out which districts were the high priority districts within Bali. And importantly, um, we want to be able to use all this, this information that we have to, to produce the baseline, but also to be able to identify what are the interventions that need to be applied in order to, to stop the plastic pollution. So we can do scenario analysis within the calculator. So we take the baseline and then we, um, we see what would happen if we start changing different aspects of it. So for instance, if we improve the waste container size and collection frequency, we might see the, the plastic pollution um, that is transported to waterways drop. And again, we can subsequently keep with, um, altering different aspects of the waste management system, such as enclosing the storm drains, tackling littering, um, extending service collection, uh, and see how your, your plastic pollution in your area can drop down to a uh, target value. Uh, and so in terms of kind of the users of the calculator, uh, we envision this being used by everyone from kind of governments right down to kind of um, local NGOs and um, local authorities that might be interested in tackling plastic pollution. So there's a, there's a large scope for different users. Um, but we, we kind of we realize that um, it's quite a comprehensive methodology, so um, we're here to kind of provide support along the way. We don't we don't imagine this kind of being given out without the support. Um, and the kind of the different support which we're able to offer. Um, we can help on kind of the data collection side um, and the application of that. We can work on data analytics. Um, quality assurance and validation of the data collected, and also on the, um, the policy decisions making um, and how to identify the different interventions. Uh, so that is a very, very brief kind of introduction into uh, the plastic pollution calculator. Um, it is it's still ongoing and uh, we're trying to now roll it out into a, a, as many different case studies as possible. So hopefully you're going to hear a lot more about this in, in the coming year. Um, and just, just to finish off, I'd uh, just like to thank kind of all, um, all our sponsors and supporters um, behind kind of the ESO Task Force uh, of Marine Litter and behind kind of the development of the calculator. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Josh, for this uh, interesting insight. Um, perhaps we can take the question in the end together for you and Imanol. Sure. Um, yeah. So for now, I'll introduce Imanol. So we also have Emmanuel Zipzala on our uh, as our panel. So Emmanuel is a waste professional and a researcher and has been working with Swiss Federal Institute in Aquatic Science and Technology Iraq since 2013. He also been involved in various waste management projects and has been an instructor for massive open online courses most pertinent to solid waste management in developing countries. And he's currently aiming to contributing towards waste SDGs. So welcome, Emmanuel. If I missed something, maybe perhaps you can introduce yourself a bit about your work and then head off with the presentation. Uh, Emmanuel, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. OK, good. Uh, so first of all, thanks for the opportunity of presenting you the waste flow diagram. Um, this is a project that I have had together with uh, different partners, uh, among which we also have University of Leeds. Uh, Josh has also been a project partner in this, uh, in this project. We've been working on this in the last year. <clears throat> Myself, uh, I'm a project coordinator and a, a researcher at EAVAC, uh, as you mentioned, and in the last years I've been basically involved in different waste related projects uh, now with marine litter and also SDG 
methodology development for one particular SDG indicator that tries to measure performance of waste management systems in cities. So I will uh, try in the next 15 minutes to guide you a little bit through the waste flow diagram. Um, <clears throat> This one is uh, compared to the plus, uh, to the ISVA calculator, I would say is more kind of um, how can I say like uh, it looks at less uh, different variables and it is an observation based. So somehow uh, the waste flow diagram could be used in order to get a quick value of what is the plastic pollution situation of cities, and when somebody would like to actually get them much deeper insights of where exactly this is happening and why one could go into the ISVA calculator. So uh, with that little intro, I will start, um, I will start in sharing my screen if I can, if I manage. Good. So let's see if this works. Yeah, it works. Uh, I will share again here. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Good. Good. So, um, yeah, welcome to this presentation on the waste flow diagram. Uh, this is a rapid and observation based assessment tool to estimate plastic leakage. In this presentation, I will guide you through the functions and the data requirements of the waste flow diagram tool. You will understand its link to SDG 11.6.1, and you will learn how it quantifies plastic leakages and how it determines their final phase. So, uh, well, we are all aware about the global plastic pollution problem. It affects all ecosystems of our planet, it degrades landscapes, and it, it is causing severe danger to animals. It also blocks drains and waterways, triggering flooding events, and it is already even present in our region. So taking into consideration all these facts, it comes as no surprise that plastic pollution has received much attention in the past years, right? This global concern has led to many international conventions, initiatives, and treaties, such as the ones that we see here, and it also United, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 14.1 uh, has been targeted this problem, right? So it's, it aims at reducing plastic emitter. So with all these activities going on, uh, many efforts are underway to try to reduce the plastic pollution into oceans, such as beach cleanups, bans on single uh, use lightweight plastic bags, such as this example from Guatemala, and uh, many initiatives have been developed in order to reuse or recycle plastics. All these activities are excellent and required. However, we believe that to really solve the problem, we need to identify the source of plastic pollution and stop it. And this is usually related to a bad solid waste management. So here we see a little schematic of a city, and we know that uncollected waste, together with waste that leaks from the solid waste management stages of collection, treatment, transportation, and disposal, are clearly some of the main sources of this plastic pollution, specifically in the middle income systems. So this really highlights the need for tools which assist understanding the extent of the problem from a city or country perspective in order to make actually polluters accountable and to take the appropriate mitigation measures. So the wasteful diagram tool was designed exactly for this purpose and the tool guides the user through a rapid and observation based. This is important, right? So we wanted to make something uh, easily reachable. So uh, we came, uh, the, the methodology is observation based, as you will see now in the coming slides. And in order to quantify plastic leakages into the environment and ultimately into water systems of a specific location, be that a town, city, or metropolitan area. The second objective of the tool is to visualize the outcomes in a standardized way, <clears throat> excuse me, to show solid waste and plastic 
mass flows, including the plastic pushing into the environment. So similar visualizations to those uh, that we saw in George's presentation. The outcomes of the waste flow diagram assessment serve to make informed decisions on what improvements can be done where, as well as to evaluate their impacts on reducing waste and plastic pollution. Using the same approach in different cities can also act, of, of course, as benchmarking and comparisons. Good. So what are the data requirements? In order to run the waste flow diagram, users must have a, obviously a good understanding of the solid waste management system of the case study being assessed. A solid waste management is composed of different stages. I guess this is, I mean, I included here, probably you guys are all familiar with this. We, we include the general collection system, treatment stage, transportation network, and lastly, disposal facilities. And from every one of these stages, we know that there's plastic in leaks. So in order to quantify the plastic leakage, the tool needs some information. Uh, here we, we say we need population of city. We also need the per capita municipal solid waste generation and characterization, amounts and characterization of waste brought to disposal facilities, amounts of materials brought to recovery facilities, and the split between the formal and informal collection. Ideally, all this information should be as up to date as possible. Uh, however, data from all reports or you know, your own estimates can also be inputted in the tool. However, if a user does not have this information or the one that you have you don't trust, I recommend to follow the methodology of SDG 11.6.1, which measures total municipal, municipal solid waste collected and managed in controlled facilities with regards to the total waste generated in cities. So an interesting feature of the waste flow diagram tool is that it is harmonized so that it can directly use and visualize data from this indicator. So once the information of the solid waste management system is compiled, the next step is to quantify the plastic waste leaking out of each stage. For each stage, the waste flow diagram considers a set of aspects related to infrastructure and practice that influence the potential leakage of plastic from every stage. So from every stage of the solid waste management system, we see that there are a list of elements that should be observed. These aspects of this element are referred to as leakage influencers. So let's see one example. Let's see an example for the case of transportation. So when we look at the transportation system, that is the, the tracks that actually bring the waste for, to the final destination, uh, the disposal or recovery facilities, uh, there are three leakage influencers that we need to check. The degree to which the load of waste exceeds the capacity of the truck, the level of waste containment in, the ba in bags, it is different if the waste is collected in bags as in the second picture, or if the waste is just not in bags as in the first picture. And the last one would be the level of coverage of the press. Sorry for, yeah, good. <clears throat> so every stage, uh, every stage of the solid waste management has several leakage influencers. Now we are only seeing those for, for transportation. And each leakage influencer has different levels of potential leakage. So when we look at each influencer, the observer should actually judge Okay, what is the potential that we have of leakage for this influencer? For each potential level, the manual provides a general description and a leakage factor as the one shown in this table, right? So here we are only seeing the influencer coverage of tracks, and we see that there are four levels, and each level comes with a description. These leakage factors are expert guest factors that represent the percentage of plastic at that particular stage of the solid waste management system that could turn into leakage. The user must conduct observations in the study and decide which of the descriptions fits, fits best with the real situation. Then the tool will apply the corresponding leakage factor. Uh, for the case of uh, level of coverage of transportation, for instance, if all tracks of a city, let me go back to this. So if all tracks of a city are compactor tracks, the leakage potential due to coverage would be very low and therefore the, uh, the user would choose the low option. 
but if just a few neighborhoods have compactor trucks and most of the city has uncovered trucks spilling waste as they drive through the city, for example, then the user will have to go for the first option and the leakage potential will be very high. All these leakage influencers, their different leakage potentials and corresponding leakage factors are arranged in decision trees as the one shown here. There's one decision tree for each stage of the solid waste management system. This one is just for transportation. After determining the leakage potentials for each leakage influencer, the waste flow diagram tools combines the corresponding leakage factors using the formula at the bottom of the screen in order to calculate the amount of plastic leaking from that stage of the solid waste management system. This is done automatically by the tool. Good. So once we have the leakage amounts, the tool then guides the user on estimating how much of these leaked amounts will ultimately end up in one of the following four phases: stored in land, burned into drainage systems, or into water bodies. This is maybe a simplification that this tool brings. These are the four phases where most of the plastic normally ends up, and therefore the tool is only considering these four. Um, correct. Good. Similar to how we did for the leakage influencers, the user manual includes a list of descriptions of how the environment should look like for each pollution level at that, uh, uh, for each fate. The user needs to choose the pollution level whose description best, best fits to the case study. So here we would see, for example, the descriptions of how land around uh, in the city or around the disposal facility, for example, should look like, and then the user chooses the description that best fits to the to their case. As mentioned before, uh, the results are then presented in plastic flow diagrams, as the one we see here, where we see the final destinations of uh, the plastics. Here I show two different diagrams because the tool allows uh, inputting. Uh, data for different scenarios so that comparability between implementation measures uh, can be assessed and their, their impacts on reducing and managed or uncollected waste can be measured. The wall methodology with all steps are explained in a user guide which we are finalizing at the moment. For those worried about the complexity, as I said, uh, we have some good news. The tool has been designed in a way that it avoids complicated calculations and complex statistics. Good, so that was my presentation. I have here a small summary. Um, I introduced the waste flow diagram tool, which is a tool that helps to conduct a rapid and observation-based assessment to calculate plastic leach, leakage and fates. It provides a standardized visualization of municipal solid waste and plastic flows, and it relies on quantitative data of the solid waste management situation for which the methodology of the SDG 11.6.1 is recommended. For a much more detailed analysis of the situation, other tools are available, such as the plastic pollution calculator, the one that we saw in the previous presentation. Uh, we also included some uh, relevant literature related to the project. And uh, I also need to mention our supporters. This is a project that has been financed by the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development of Germany and GIZ. And the project partners, you see them also below. GIZ, University of Leeds, EAVAC, and WasteAware.